What you are about to see is an episode of Comedy After Dark. This was a TV show that aired in Connecticut, 1992 to 1994, and starred high school friends. There was no high definition then. We shot the show on VHS tape. The old tapes broke down over time, leaving some episodes with poor video quality. Hey guys, welcome to Comedy After Dark, show number 73. Uh, sorry that um, you're looking at my photo right now and just hearing my voice. <clears throat> I'm actually pretty ill. I have, uh, I don't know, some kind of throat infection or something, and I look like hell. So instead of you um, being tormented with nightmares, uh, I thought I would just do it this way. But I had to introduce this episode. I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible because there are some big changes with the show. The first one... We no longer have a band. Dementia is gone. What happened was we had a deal on the show called the Three Strikes Deal. The whole cast agreed to it in early 1993. And basically what would happen is someone would not show up to an episode and they wouldn't call us. And that would anger me. I think that would anger the... Actually, the other cast members would get pissed as well because we would have skits planned out, written out, and then they wouldn't show up and... It screwed us. We had to go and change around the episode, try to figure things out. It gave us headaches. It was really tough. Now, the show was improv but the structure of the show was pre-written. So everything had an order. The skits were written out with a brief little um, description of what they were going to be and who was going to be in it. So if people didn't show up, we couldn't do it, and it would hurt the show. So <clears throat> I talked to the whole cast, and I said, look, we're, we're going to do a three strikes deal. Here it is. <clears throat> if you miss an episode and you don't call us to let us know that you can't come or come up to me in person or tell one of us in person, I don't care who it is, you just don't show up, that's strike one. The second time, uh, and strike one, by the way, was a warning. Strike two, suspension. Strike three, you're fired. You're no longer part of the show. Now, we started doing that and... It always went well. People were never offended or upset or turned on us um, because they understood. So if they didn't show up and then the next week they already have strike three, they'd walk into the studio and we'd look at them and go, sorry, strike three. And they'd be like, yeah, I know. I'm sorry. I'm like, well, that's the way it is. But hey, you know, our door's always open. If you want to come whenever you want, that's fine. But you, you can't be a part of the show anymore. We can't write skits for you. But hey, you know. You can show up here and that's fine. You know, we, we don't mind that. So it never it never ended badly. Nobody was ever offended. We kept in touch with, with, with mostly everybody. And um, they, some of them did come back and some of them would even participate in a show, like to just make a little cameo or whatever. So what happened is when we did our 65th episode, as you probably saw if you watched it, we recorded that as our last show because we were having cast problems. After our 50th episode, we couldn't get enough people to show up. People weren't calling. People weren't showing up. People were skipping out. It was happening really bad. Um, and sometimes it was just me and Lawrence doing a show. And we were like, this is pathetic. How could we keep doing a show if nobody's here? And we either have to go and cast, which would be tough because we were on summer vacation. So we didn't have a way of getting in touch with new people. Or we're going to be shutting down here. So when the band heard about that, they didn't want the show to end. Somehow they, they got together and we got the band back for a while. But then they started skipping out and the majority of them um, ended up going through the street three strikes deal. So a bunch of them were fired. So we were left with Paul and Nikki. The rest were gone. Now Paul was part of the high school band. So Saturdays were tough for him because... Sometimes there was band practices or school events, and so he just couldn't show up. He also would carry around this giant amp, and it was a real pain in the ass for his father to have to, to bring him with the amp and for him to carry it down and all that. So he asked if he could just be an actor on the show and no longer play. And so we we're like, yeah, sure, that's fine. And so that was the end of the band. 
no more. Also in this episode, you're going to notice Jay, Jay Ansaldo and Nikki Coulson are also gone. Um, I think I mentioned it briefly in the episode, but I never got into it. I just didn't like talking about personal issues or behind the scenes stuff in an episode. Even though this episode I had planned on it, I guess I backed out. <clears throat> so what happened was by the time the f- late summer, early fall came along, the show had changed a lot. We were filming episodes very quickly. I mean, it used to take us all day Saturdays from 1 p.m. till usually 10 p.m. And eventually we just got so good at it and so used to doing it that it would just take us an hour or two, maybe two. But for the most part, we were recording episodes as if they were live, not really cutting and, um, you know, going right through it, right in order. And so me, Lawrence, and Carl, who were best friends at the time, we weren't in a rush to do the, uh, do the show. You know, we kind of took our time to get started. We would talk for like a while and joke around and, you know, we weren't in such a rush because we knew we could just get it done fast. But Jay and Nikki, they didn't feel the same way. They came in at uh, whatever time we were shooting at that time. I think we were starting at two or three and they wanted to just go. They wanted to get the episode filmed and then leave. And there was a reason for that. First of all, both of them lived very far away from from where where we filmed. Um, Nikki lived really far. None of them had cars, so they had to rely on Nikki's mother for their ride. So Nikki's mother would have to drive to the show every Saturday from a long distance. First, go pick up Jay, who lived on the other side of town, which was very far. After driving from Nikki's location then to drive to our location I mean it was a lot of driving and a lot of time and you know even though for us you know we're sitting there shooting the breeze for a while they're spending like you know half hour 45 minutes maybe an hour driving and then Nikki's mother would have to sit in her car she didn't have to but you know as the cast got smaller I think it became more awkward to have an audience because there wasn't a lot of us there so she would just wait in her car and and I don't know what she did whether she slept or read magazines but obviously that's got to be stressful to Jay and Nikki knowing that she's sitting there in the car so they were stressed out you know they want to get it done and go we at the time weren't really understanding yet why they seemed to have this kind of attitude about it and one day we overheard them talking saying, come on, this is every week. Why do they do this? Now, I'm paraphrasing here, but basically it was like, what the hell are they doing? Why aren't we getting filming here? We got to go. I mean, this is such a waste of time. Maybe we should just start coming late. I mean, we'll come late, then they'll start shooting. And we were kind of looking at each other like, what the hell's their problem? And um, we just started feeling that maybe they didn't want to be there. So we, the three of us talked, and we started to think about what I just told you about their traveling, And we thought a combination of between all the traveling, them maybe not wanting to be there anymore. I mean, the whole band was gone. That's how Nikki became part of the show. You know, Paul wasn't there that much because of the band. Jay was good friends with John, and he's no longer part of the show. So it's got to be tough for them. And of course, the stress of knowing that, you know, we're sitting here shooting the breeze. The mother's sitting in the car. They got to get going here. You know, they're holding her up. And then we thought about our Christmas movie coming up and the amount of time it was going to take and the fact that we needed people to be nearby and reliable. And we didn't think that they were going to be able to pull it off. And as it turned out, we were right. Um, We ended up filming our Christmas vacation movie like every other day, during the week, after school, on weekends, for, for six weeks. So it took a lot of work and I don't think they would have been able to do it. And then we thought about winter. We wanted people who were going to be able to handle the winter, be nearby, because what if we had a bad winter and we were skipping episodes every week? And now we were at the point where our show was airing typically the same week or the week after we shot it. So we didn't have time to screw around. We couldn't just skip a week or otherwise we're not going to air on television. And so we made that decision and we let them go. It went well. They weren't offended or upset. They absolutely understood. Nikki was so nice about it. And 
it was all good. We kept in touch. Um, I'd call her. She'd call me. She asked about the show. I think she watched it on television, too, with Jay. And so they still followed it and still egged us on. And that was great. And they were part of our final episode. They were there, which was awesome. So there you go. That's what happened. You're going to see our new cast member, Carla. I don't really need to explain much about her because we do it in the episode. I have an interview with her, and we find out all about her. So, ladies and gentlemen, here is the episode. From Studio One in North Bradford, Connecticut, it's Comedy After Dark starring Mike Burns. Also with Carl Peterson, Paul Mealy, Carla Rose Arnold, and Lawrence Degley. All here tonight on Comedy After Dark, starring Mike Burr. And now, turn on your lights, snuggle up and get cozy, here's Mike Burr. Thanks for that. A couple of big claps. Well, welcome back. To Comedy After Dark, this is our big return. We haven't been on television since... Well, we're supposed to be on September 17th, but something happened and we weren't. So, this is a big comeback. It's very quiet here, I don't like that. <laughs> well, I have a few things to talk about before I update you on what's been going on since we've last been on. And uh, one thing is... No, this is just going to be great. A few weeks, I'm going to consider it done. How many people have heard that expression? Me. All of you, because you've been used, you've used it yourself. Me. Me. Consider it done. Now with this expression, uh, there's other shows going on here, so I think we'll be ticking people out, huh? Uh, uh. How you doing, Paul? Good. Let's go. Five. Okay. The expression, consider it done. Now you've all... How many people have been out of home? You talk on the phone and you're, you know, just yapping away. Oh, hey, blah, 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 shut up, man. You're yapping away. Hey, how you doing, blah, blah, blah. And someone asks you a question. Oh, by the way, do you have those uh, notes for that class I have? I, I was wondering if you can give them to me. Consider it done. How can you consider it done? It has not been done yet. Have you given the guy the damn cards? Or the, the notes or anything? No. So what happens if you never give it to him? Consider it done. He could. Hey, wait a minute. Shouldn't I have the notes by now? Consider it done. I should have it done. All right, you're going to paint a house. Yes, son, I'd like you to paint my house. Okay, consider it done. <laughs> it looks the same. I want it blue, not red. You didn't paint the house. How can you consider it done? So that's what I mean when, when I mean that. We know you're I'm right. insecure. We understand. It's funny. We feel your pain. You're silly. <laughs> you're hilarious. Well, last week, I was at a wedding. And I, when I, the last time I was at a wedding, I actually... Dance with a chick. Shut up. I was actually, uh... You know what? I bought a hot dog Dance with a chick. Shut up. <laughs> I, shut up. <laughs> so I went to the wedding. And when I went to this wedding... See, the last time I was there, I was in the wedding party. So I wasn't sitting in the little pews there watching them. Why they call it the wedding? But I wasn't there. Watching, you know, Dave Letterman doesn't have this, or Dennis Miller when he used to have a show, or Chevy Chase when he used to have a show. Jay Leno doesn't have this. They have just laughing and when something, and they laugh at the right reasons when it's actually good. They don't talk or yell or whatever. They never mention words, and cameramen don't talk. That's why one of our cameramen is gone now. Okay. So, anyways, so much editing. To do. I was at a wedding last week, and when I was in the wedding, I was at the wedding party. Now, uh, you see, I never sat in the pews, so, but you should hear the wedding gossip that goes on. And I'm telling you right now, it, it ain't pretty. I'm not going to tell you, though, but it's not pretty. <laughs> Grandfathers, they always complain. You know, all the old guys in there. 
The point is late. She's late. When she's twenty, she's damn it. I can't have words. I can't sit in these wooden chairs. The point is late. It is time to just shut up. Be quiet. They'll be, they'll be here. Look. Oh, for God, jeez, the kid is wearing jeans. Oh, my God, that is disrespect. If I had that here, if this was my wedding, I wouldn't allow that. That is disrespect wearing jeans at a wedding. Oh, long hair. The kid has long hair. Look at the groom. The groom is late. Oh, jeez, I need my back pills. There's a kind of gossip that goes on. But you hear this. Ooh, who's that? Well, that's the, that's the bride's mother. Ooh, oh, she looks good today. I know, she never dresses up. Oh, oh, isn't that? Oh, look, look. Oh, he's cute. Oh, I know. Oh, what's that thing hanging on his neck? Oh, God, that's sick. Oh, <laughs> so, it's pretty dusty in here. I was cleaning up all these. <laughs> ah, shit! Excuse me. Ah, shit! Bless you. Well, now. Ah, shit! Oh, all right, anyways, uh, now to update you and what's going on. We've had a lot of deaths. An actor, a good actor. Yeah! No, it's not funny or a good thing because I was a fan of all these people. Look at this. Let's look at this list. We lost some great actors. We lost the brilliant Vincent Price. That's right, the other day I died. Well, he died a few weeks ago. Of all coincidences, too, and I bet no one realized this, he died the week of Halloween. Now, isn't that airy, huh? Big horror guy? Yes, it is. <laughs> good fight, Mike! Raymond! Yes! Raymond Burr died. Yes, he was uh, Perry Mason. Perry. He's a, that was a funny character. <laughs> and of course, recently, like last week, well, from when our show was seen. <laughs> and last week, uh, River Phoenix died. Which, that was a. That's not good. That is disrespect to these famous actors who were just nice to act and talented. River Phoenix was a good guy. Too bad he left. That's not funny, you guys. I didn't say that, Channel 8. Don't fire us because of losers like them. That was like Paul. Well, we got these remotes coming up now. They're uh, something new we're going to be doing. Where we go on the streets and interview people. And I'm with a TV show. I want to know, um, what kind of meat do you prefer? Who, me? But, yeah. Oh, I don't know. No, no. Do you mind being asked for chicken? For chicken? That's good. It's healthy. Much better for you than any red meat. What do you think about the food lines now that they're they're serving uh, bad meats? I don't, I, I don't buy very much meat. I don't eat very much meat at all. Good. You must be a very healthy woman. Thank you. No? Um, I've got a cat and I've got a niece. I've got two nieces, actually. Do you prefer to give them to the range of some well, the cat doesn't drink cranberry juice. Um, I've only just discovered that I like cranberry apple juice. That's really um, So this is actually for me and my husband. It's probably a lot healthier for you than soda. Yes, but I do like my soda. All right. Thank you for coffee. Favorite beverages? Uh, Coke. Coke, and why is that? Um, I like the uh, zesty taste that Coke's has. Do you like it better than Pepsi? Mm. Yes, I was just. Is it because it's uh, just all around better, or is there a certain quality? That uh, I has? think I think it's all around better. I really do. That's good. Yeah. What do you think about the food line lately? If they're serving bad meat. Well, uh, I really couldn't answer that question at this time. Okay. Are you a politician? No, I'm not. Well, you're. Thank <laughs> <laughs> Coffee mate or regular cream in your coffee? I don't drink coffee. If you did drink coffee, do you think you'd choose a coffee mate or a cream? I think I'll pick cream. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, I think it tastes better. What do you think about the food line lately where they're serving, serving bad meats? Oh, hey, the food line, that's that place in... Oh, I 
I did see that. Well, they're oh, serving. What did I think about it? Yeah. That was disgusting. Disgusting. <laughs> if you ever found out that wall bombs were serving bad meat, what would you do? I wouldn't shop here anymore. Okay, thank you. Why is that? Oh, yeah. Just like it better? Okay. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you work at McDonald's? Yeah, okay. Uh, no, what exactly? Yeah, what exactly is on a Big Mac? Hamburger, cheese, pickles, onions. <laughs> on a sesame seed bun? Uh-huh. What if I didn't want sesame seeds on, this, on the bun? I could change that? Yeah. And how would they do that? I'm sure they'd give you another rule. Ah. Well, thank you very much. It's my mom's brother. Which do you prefer, Coke or Pepsi? Coke. And why is that? Because we like the taste. And what's better about the taste? What's your favorite snack? Potato chips. What kind? Barbecue. Barbecue? Okay, thank you very much. Do you like that? Canteen. Canteen. Does it work really good? Yes, it does. What's great about it? it makes my hair soft. Soft? That's good. That's good. <laughs> what, do you, what do you prefer, Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Why is that? Sweeter. Sweeter? <laughs> 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 coming up. Uh, I don't know what it's about, but we got one. So we'll be back right after this.
right, anyways, um, we have a great show today, I think. Woo! Um, coming up on our next show, I'm not going to be here, so I'm happy about that, because I have so much panic. I'm so glad I won't be here. Okay, we're going to have a guest host. I don't know who it is. I don't know who's it. What, I don't know what's going on here, because I, I only host this show. And I want it. Ricky Rack. Okay, uh, <laughs> let me go find what we're doing today, and, uh, okay, we're moving along here. It's getting dark out there. But that's because it gets dark early now. Oh, yeah, boom. That's sad. Five o'clock. I don't understand. Okay, we have um, mm -hmm. big headache right now. We got uh, a c commercial with uh, Seth the Woman people, Al Pacino and his son. Where was he? We got this Vincent Price because he died, so I I can do an impression of him. So I thought we'd do a skit in memory of Vincent Price, and uh, there'll be some tales for you, you know. Uh, an interview with our new cast member, Carla Rose Arnold. <laughs> She's joined the show today. Um, we have news break. <laughs> NB PD Blue. And a bunch of other things, but you'll see that soon. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, here's our sidekick and lovely friend. and He's a girlish man. Lawrence Dagley. Good evening, <laughs> No, 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 no. Look at everybody hurts. Everybody hurts sometimes. It's my god. We we my shit. Okay. Chocolate. Yeah. Um, been bad things this week? No. Real tomato no. ketchup, ready? <laughs> Oh well, I've been doing good belt in a best. long time. Okay. Not much the bash. Um. <laughs> I was just, I was just browsing. Browsing. Just oh, browsing. For, for a second. <laughs> My name. No. Hmm. <laughs> no no shit. Jeez, oh, what? Mike. What happened? Mike. 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 Fuck you, all right? Just fuck you. <laughs> Truck you. Okay, this is right. Uh, Happy Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, Happy Thanksgiving. Oh, thank Hope you, Mike. You know, right? Because this show will know you're welcome. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Paul. Thank but you. you know, there's something about Thanksgiving. Wow. <laughs> and you know what? It's time for another edition of. I think of a name for this. I hate this. My lips are all big here. Oh, oh, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> now it's another. You know, should we do that over again? Because it's just going to look stupid. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Thank you, Mike! You're welcome, Carla. And you know what that brings us to? Another edition of What Does Thanksgiving Mean to You? Of course, last time it was what Halloween means to you, but it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> uh, next week, you're not going to believe this, but next week we begin our Christmas season, 93. Yeah! yeah. It's hard to believe. Well, no, that's in a couple more weeks, but yeah. Oh uh, yeah, let me might as well tell you about that. Christmas movie, we're playing double roles here, some of us. We've got, okay, Lawrence will be playing Clark's father. Clark from Christmas all the way to Flash to a year later into Thanksgiving. What does Thanksgiving mean to me? Well, it reminds me of sitting around the old big kitchen table, dining room table. We don't eat in the kitchen. Sitting around the big dining room kitchen, kicking Carl Peterson's ass because he doesn't shut up. And sitting around the dining room table eating turkey, big turkey meat and, turkey, yeah, yeah, turkey. and mashed potatoes and maybe mm, turkey and mashed potatoes are good. What? And turnips and cranberry I sauce. Like I don't know, but I'll tell you that in a moment when I'm finished with my story. Thank you very much. Amen. God bless you. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> so it reminds me of sitting around the table. I might as well tell you because no one else knows. I'm sitting sitting around the table. Like, I like the new color of the chair. Yeah. 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 Silver pine. What color is that like? Ah. Silver, Silver pine. pine. I'm going to check Silver you. pine. <laughs> Silver pine. It's Christmas time. It's Christmas time in the city. So, Thanksgiving is sitting around a table and 
enjoying the delicious turkey and mashed potatoes and the turnips and cranberries. And if you don't shut them, okay. And it tastes beautiful. But another thing I like is you know, the little kids run around the table with the dog, you know, and they knock yeah, things yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when Grandpa blows a big chunk of gas out of his ass and stinks up everything, and then he just sits there laughing and says, pull my finger, and you think it's something else, so you do, and then he makes it smell real bad, and you end up banging your head against the table because he ruined Thanksgiving, and you can't stand it anymore because he, not only did he gas up the room, but he sat on the pumpkin pie, so you can't eat that anymore, and your aunt, she, she burned the turkey because when you open it up, steam flies out of it because it's all hard meat, and there's nothing left to it. Then the, the cranberry sauce is a cranberry sauce and someone puked and they thought, hell, I have cranberry and the turnips aren't turnips. They decided to chew them, turn them around in their stomach and puke it up. That's what Thanksgiving means to me. One thing, what's Thanksgiving mean to you? Well, Mike, I'm glad you asked. Mike, I'm glad you asked. Thanksgiving means to me, as you pointed out, sitting around eating your turkey and then suddenly you... Uh, you know when you always have that one big piece that you think you can swallow, but yet you can't, and you think you chewed it enough times, but it gets stuck there, and you're like, and they're sitting there, are you choking? And, and then like they have to call the medical unit, and you spend your whole Thanksgiving in the hospital. That's what Thanksgiving means to me. What do you think of Thanksgiving, Carl Peterson? What does it mean to you? Okay. What does Thanksgiving mean to you, Carl? I don't know. You're in the whole stick. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Carlo Rosano, because Carl's too lazy to say what it means to you. You want the mic? What does... Yeah, what does Thanksgiving mean to you? Well... <laughs> he has a problem with convulsions. Convuls <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, what? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Cranberry sauce. Something from a never before seen tape of Vincent Price before his death. Vincent Price, Price Tales. Now, here's Vincent Price. Shh. Ah, I'm Vincent Price. And these are my wonderful tales, Price Tales, of strange coincidences and items and things that have happened. How could that man be wearing Calvin Klein perfume? It smells bad. Excuse me. But one of the things I want to mention to you is this. If you just killed a fly with a man's body, and I killed a fly, I mean a man, with a fly's head, then who's really the killer? My first story is, shut up. Thank you for my memory. My first story is a story about the mildew. <laughs> mildew all over. And so it takes place in a small town in Idaho. Here it is. Now, right here. Here it is, playing games with us. Here it is, the mildew. <laughs> you ever see that thing where they can cut that hill? Hello, Bob. Hello. Mike? Michael Lurie. Hey, Vincent. Hey, Vincent Price. Hello. What a pleasure to meet you. Thank you. Now, what I is have mildew. Oh, no, it's same part. Mildew. <laughs> That's not scary. Near. <laughs> no? Near. 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 I'm confused. Near. Vincent Price. Mildew everywhere. Mildew. Mildew! Are you crazy, man? It's Mildew! I was detergent. Spray it out, see what happens. <laughs> it's ah! the Mildew! Ah! It's the Mildew! Ah! The Mildew! Ah! Mr. Worry, <laughs> find yourself being chewed by mildew. After throwing acid on his friend, well, now our next story takes place in a forest. Here. A forest? 
where something unusual happens. Now, here it is, the story of the tree. Get your feet in the mildew, please. <laughs> I guess that was it, again, confusing, crazy, mysterious, and I'm Vincent Price, and this is your Price Tales, until next time, and evil, and I'm a thriller, and a thriller all night. My show time. What do you got? Uh-oh. Okay, we're back. I love you, Anna. Oh, no. Aww. It's affecting the show now. No, it's I love you, too, Anna. Isn't that sweet? Keep your love life away. I, I keep mine away. I wanted to let her know off the show. No. She told you to do that, didn't she? No. no. I told you to do that. Oh, isn't that cute? <laughs> I love you, Anya. <laughs> Shut up! It'll be something if we have a New Year's special and he kisses her on him when the ball goes down. Aww. Aww. Just like, Aww. he'll join the group of Paul Mealy and his many girlfriends when they used to French kiss in the back, and then Tucker Aww. and his many. And, when Chad would kiss Yogi. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's rude! Uh, oh. Don't pick on Chadwick! What? We've got a new cast member called Who's Yoda? Let's bring Hey, 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 that's my job. That's my job, you moron. You look like a job. I love you, Anna. I love you, Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest is our first guest of the evening and last guest for today. I feel so special. Most guests usually behind the curtains don't talk, so this is uh, something new. <laughs> Any more for you, sir, ladies and gentlemen. Make fun of the hell out. So, this next guest is a new cast member joining us today. Now, today's a little slow because we're just getting used to things again. So, as earlier today, I was irritated and strange. Do I usually act that way? No. Okay, good. Just today. Just today? Okay. Hi! Do you have a headache? No. I just... I hated everyone. Yeah. Oh, I don't blame you. <laughs> no, I just tried to get used to the show. Oh, I, I see. Mean, I'm so psyched for this movie. I like the movies. Yeah. yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, here she is. Carla Rose, Carla Rose Arnold. Arnold. Hello, Carla. Thank you for being here. Oh, that's one hell of a grip you've got there. Oh, 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 I think I got a hold of my pants. Oh, look at the cute oh, one. Gosh. <laughs> <laughs> my desk fell apart while we were gone. And now there's this nail here, and it just ripped my pants apart. Isn't that just... Oh, no. I'd just like to say, I love you, Ian. <laughs> no, let's say... Want a piece from my desk that I've had? It just fell apart. No, Rob. No, Rob. Well, no, Rob. this is... Leave the love story to no, your Rob. first... No, let's just... Rob. No, Rob. Hi, Rob. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> this is what we have to look forward to. So... Like cardboard, like wood. Oh, you what mean? was that? Your mom baked it or something? No, you. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't supposed to eat that. It was part of the desk. Oh, well. <laughs> I bet I could rip this whole desk apart if I wanted. Dude. So, Miss Arnold, you wouldn't have to be related Miss. to Kevin Arnold. Miss. <laughs> Are you done? Yes. Yes, I'm his brother. <laughs> <laughs> He's my brother. <laughs> you want to put a beard on too. Oh my god, he lives! He lives! <laughs> Anyways, now you have uh, you have acted before. Yes, yes no, oh. yes. Yes, no, yes. Yes, you <laughs> Oh my god, Smurfette's here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't do that again. Okay. Yeah, I'm 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 gonna gonna <laughs> you actually are an actor. Yeah, my face. Actress. I'm sorry. What is? It? I got. I got to ask you this because I've heard two stories for two different. One time, they, I heard someone say, "We are all actors. We are all the oh, same thing. Why should we be considered?" Is that a swear? No. Oh, shit! <laughs> Kebab. But I heard, yes, I heard them saying, I don't want to be considered an actress or an actor, just an actor is the same person, or do they want actress and actors? 
Well, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> No, I want to be called an actress. An actress. Okay. Female. Good. Why? So I've had all, mostly actors on the show, so... Excuse me, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> We're tearing apart your couch. I'm so you want sorry. to go? Because <laughs> I need to, to be the guest and you're annoying. Boom! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my next guest... No, I'm your only guest. Okay. You know I am. Yeah. Boom! <laughs> 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 I'm retiring after today. Whoever's <laughs> guest hosting next show is gonna stay though. I am. I'm gonna leave. Are you gonna be the host? Sure, why not? Okay, interesting. Do you, did you see how we do it here? Or are you gonna be this way? <laughs> Let's Ooh. talk about your your acting. Act your scene. <laughs> Shut up! I'm gonna take my face off, man! Ah! 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 Now. No, and you're acting. Uh, periods. <laughs> <laughs> Sick mind. <laughs> While you we were acting, that's better. How was it? How was it? <laughs> <laughs> it's a treat for you. You know, they do this. Every time I mention a word, Lawrence has to turn it into a sex story. You <laughs> make I'm sorry. He's sorry. You know, I could have gotten Sergeant Slaughter to be my guest today. <laughs> I got his autograph today and I talked to him. Carlo Rose I talked to yeah, Sergeant Slaughter today. I asked him what it was like wrestling, how he likes signing autographs. He loves it. I could have had him come on this show. No, I had Carlo Rose Arnold, who doesn't seem to want to be interviewed. I want to be interviewed. Go ahead, interview me. Ask me anything. Now, Carlo Rose Arnold. You know what you remind me of? Have you ever see the movie The Fly 2? Uh, no. And you Joel know what that means? You knew? Joel How about, you ever yeah. see Spaceballs? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know the girl in there, the princess? Yeah. You sort of have a resemblance. And Joel Houston from the Addams Family. I was. Were you? I was Morticia. Do you play her? Yeah, I used a stage name. Whatever he said. <laughs> and Joel Houston from the Addams Family. <laughs> yeah. You're Joel Houston? Yeah. So you have two, oh two, two guests today. God, I'm a big fan. Oh, and the movie with Nicholson. Oh, Princey's Honor. Princey's Honor, wow. Oh, great. And to Adam's, oh, you got the new movie Adam's Family 2 coming out? No, it's oh, Family Values. The Values. Family Values. Family Values. Oh, oh, wait. Jellica Houston here. You'll get naughty so, right now. in your movie. <laughs> so you're in your movie. Mm -hmm. Darling. Oh. Yes, darling. So how many, uh, <laughs> cameraman left? <laughs> <laughs> how many theater productions have you done? Like, six. <laughs> I'm not interviewing you. Six. Have you done six? Any? No. Mm -hmm. I've done, like... Seven. Shut up, Ed. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> Good choice. Go on. Ed McMahon never did this. <laughs> yes. All he said. You never said the one where he's drunk. <laughs> yes, Johnny. You're the king, Johnny. Yeah, right. Yes, right. <laughs> I now feel like Jay Leno when he loses his control. You ever see him yeah. sit back and... Yep. Yep. Yeah! Whatever. Now, how many theater productions have you been in? Um, like 20. 20? Yeah. yeah. And uh, for what type of deals? Like? I usually play the comical roles. Yeah? Like... Yeah. Oh! <laughs> Hit my labs! Charles Manson's here, ladies and gentlemen. Now, oh, is yeah. it fun? Do you love it? Yes, do you I like do. it? Do you ever get sick of it? Is it no. for you? No. You ever had problems? No. Okay. No. How do you like this no. show? <laughs> You've seen it on television. Yes, I have. What have you thought of it? It sucked. <laughs> <laughs> no! I think she'll be leaving now. <laughs> Nice, you're only fooling. I'm only being silly. <laughs> now, name some of the productions you've done. Sneaky fish. You see, now we're. Shut I, up. Sneaky fish. Shut up. Sneaky. Let her answer the questions, Lawrence. Aunt, let her. Aunt, it's me. It's a young talk game. Now, <laughs> <laughs> see this here. I joined, see, I didn't join the crop drama club. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't join the crap club. The drama club. You know, in the past three years that I was at high school because I couldn't get a run, so that's me. And, uh, 
I was afraid. I was scared. <coughs> no, I'm a little more brave than that. You're brave! Let's give a big hand, Mike, for increasing his fears and coming through with it. Yo. But they were going to do a little shot of horrors this year. No, but Enough! And they decided not to, but I was really looking forward to it. They're doing the lavender. A little lavender. No, Lil, Lil, not Lil. Lil lavender. Lil. I heard about that. So, so little. I don't know if I call the letters. <laughs> By the way, I'm sorry. No, thanks for being here. Thank you. Goodbye. And have a nice day. I'm Mike Brook, and we've got coming up next is a um, news break with your host, Lawrence Degley. And she's going to pull me over there. I'm going to fly and hit the wall. So I'll we'll be host. back. Uh... Rip that off. <laughs> oh. And that's six. He's never going to get a dive of his hair, dude. Oh, God. Oh, dude. I'll do that. There you go. Oh, you know, I like back in a moment uh, to say goodbye, which is something I'm looking forward to. So see you then. Do you have your scissors? Now, <laughs> it's a comedy after dark news break with your anchor person, Lawrence Degley. Hi, and welcome to Newsbreak. It's Saturday, November 6, 1993. SAT day. And today on Newsbreak, we have an interesting news story. Leona Helmsley was taken out of her prison at... Uh, prison at... Was, taking out, was taken out of her prison and moved to a halfway house. So right now we have exclusively... We're talking to two prisoners who have been in prison for a long time who don't think it's fair that she should get to go there. And of course, we couldn't get them live, but we have them via satellite. Charles Manson and <laughs> Hector the Le Lecter the Hector, whatever, what's your name? <laughs> My name is Hannibal Lecter. Hannibal Lecter. And a cannibal the cannibal. The Hannibal the cannibal Lecter, that's right. And let's, let's see, do we have our satellite picture uh, of them? There they are. A satellite picture. So we on TV, man. Okay. <laughs> so you guys are are pretty upset. I'm not asking the questions. Just getting to go to the halfway house, aren't you? Are we upset there, Charles Manson? Oh, we upset. <laughs> we ain't never been more upset than this before. Holy cow! Whoa! Where's that Geraldo guy? Want to squeeze him out? Oh boy! Now, when Geraldo. <laughs> Quite interrupted your life. What did you feel? Uh, excuse me, uh, Hector. Hector. Do you want to eat him? I'm sorry, Father. It's okay. Let me ask the questions. So, Hector. Do you normally sit like that, Mr. Degley? No, he is. Yes, Hector. I do. He's almost. That's what he is. Exactly. Yes, Mr. Long. It's like to me. It's like to eat. Um. I'm going to take his face and wear it. So, excuse me! Thank you. Yeah, that's right. So, you bet. what do you guys think you should do? Are you going to pass a petition around all the prisoners and have it signed saying Leona, Leona should not uh, be able first to... First of all, Mr. Dagley, I want to say that it's not intelligent of the police force to add Leona Hemsley into the... Because they should listen to him. She I'm listening. Listen now, listen. I'm listening. Christ, watch the I see it. Are you possessed now? No. You're going to be possessed. I don't want to be. Oh, you're going to be possessed. You know something? I don't believe that you are Jesus Christ. I am Jesus Christ. Are you? I am. I was resurrected from the dead. That's what I was. And she's going to break. Now, <laughs> what I think is my own ahead of the day should not be sent to a halfway house, which is a hotel building. She's a prisoner. I should treat it accordingly. Look what I was sent to. I he sent me in a big cage yes, in the middle of a hole. With no yeah, but you, you no eat other people. No window, look at him. I could not get a window. You eat other people. I love eating other people. But Mr. Leona Helmsley didn't eat questions. other people. Mr. Dave, Mr. Dave what? Can I ask you a question? Yes. What kind of law do you believe in? Do you mean Christ or Satan? Christ or Satan, Mr. Dave? That's a stupid question. It's a stupid question. It's a stupid question. It's not a stupid question, Larry. I'll come Larry. kill you. If you want to answer the question, you, Larry, you better answer I snap your neck. Your neck, I snap it. Oh, yeah? You're dead, Mr. Dagley. Your mama was well, coming back, Bruce. You're dead. <laughs> Mr. Dagley, as a host of a weekend news show, or a news update show, or a news break, the host is always supposed to remain calm. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Now, remain calm, that's what I want to do. In a tough situation, I'm thinking, but I'm remaining calm. I'm sorry. And calm he is. <laughs> but, Mr. Dagley, yes. I was stuck in a jail cell with no windows. 
By the way, did you eat people though? What did Miggs and the other salad say to you? <laughs> uh, I so, think that you know, do you don't you agree? Don't you think do that I there think? should be a law that dictates that if if someone else does Not something eat. like eat people or someone does things like that, and then Leona Helms who just simply evades your taxes, do you oh, think yeah, that she should be punished as severely as you have? I mean, should she be put in a room with no windows because she didn't know she evaded her taxes like any normal, hot she blooded American person did? She should be put. You know what I think I'm going to put her in? What? What I'm fine, I'm going to put her in a freaking sewer. Right? I sewer. think that Miss Clarice, I'm sorry, Miss Leona <laughs> Hemsley. <laughs> She'd be sent somewhere far and dark and cold. Yeah. She'd be sent in a prison where she has nothing. I hope you find him, Lawrence. No, I believe it. I hope you find him and destroy the life that Leona has made for all of us. Let's from, get She is going into a hotel. A hotel queen herself, she is. I think that she's going there to take her 70-year-old party and enjoy herself How old in she? luxury. 70 years old. Oh, she's not good there. No. Let's I, kill her. I think we should... Why don't you kill her, chop out her heart, and I would chew her face off and wear it. Alright. I've always wanted to look like her. What are you laughing at, Mr. Daly? I'm not laughing. I'll kill you! You try it. Mr. Daly, what kind of a question do you would like to ask us at the present moment? I would like to ask you, then... So then, if you think that Leona Helmsley it should not be put in a hotel... Wait a minute. What? Leona Hemsley? I thought you meant Sherman Hemsley. <sighs> Ah, I think I mixed That's up. That's a problem. One of them's a big old fat lady who's 75 years old. I think I'm with a little black dude from the Jeffersons. <laughs> and so it is. No, so I'm talking to... about Leona Helms. Geraldo is looking in your vault. Geraldo, I have a vault. I bet they won't find anything. If I can smile for a bottle. You know, Charlie? I'm getting very hungry right now. Oh, God. And that face of yours. Uh, we better yeah. switch over from the uh, satellite program before so we witness something really bad. Let's say we go Let's escape from prison and eat his face. You guys can't escape from prison. Guess what? Let's do it. Uh, well, anyway, that's them! Help me! I want your Uh, him are out. You know, Hector, the lector. Hector. Said, person once said to me, Doctor Lector, why do they call you a cannibal? Uh, and well, that's easy me. because I eat people. I take my long fingernails that look like they've existed. I put them inside a human body and I tear the flesh off its bones. Then I chew on it and eat it. It's delicious and good. Okay, you guys. Coming up next, we have Joey Butterfuco. Joey Butterfuka. Joey Butterfuka. Come. Where the fuck is that beeping guy? I don't know, but I'm gonna beep his beep his beep. Let me tell you something, you fat. Let me tell you, you fat fat. You son of a fat. Got your fat 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 fat. Hey, I'm a senior officer. Don't you beat me like beat that. I'm tired of your fat crap, you son of a fat. Hey, don't call me a son of a bitch! You're a son of a bitch! You're a son of a bitch! I was talking to the chick and she said, beep me! And I oh, said, I'll beep you up, beep and not you beep! Well, she was beeping me the night before she was <laughs> And I was beeping you. her and beeping! Well, I was beeping and beeping and beeping! Beep you! No, beep you! Beep me! We gotta beep you! Look, shove it up your beeping hole! The beeping chair fell! I hope that wasn't the chair for my room. The car will fucking drive! I'm tired of you with that beep! <laughs> You got that in the beeping car. Get the beeping car. You get the beeping car. You get the beeping car. Get the beeping car. Get the beeping car. You get the beeping car. I'm not getting that beeping car. I'm getting that beeping car. Beep you. No, beep you. Shut the. Uh, 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 uh
beef. You're a big fat I'm man. 60 guy. years. We could get him on 80 beef in years. 80 beef in years? And be my beeping ass. Beep. Beep. Beep your balls. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 beep. Beep, 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 don't you punch me! Beep oh. me, you beeping piece of beep! You think you're so cool, you're heroic? Beep the beep! Wait, beep. wait, hold up! We have a beeping beep and my beeping hair! Oh, shit! You ain't nothing but a beep beep! I haven't had a beeping donut since this beeping morning! I want a beeping coffee so I can sit in my fat beeping ass in my back! Beep 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 Let's get in the beeping car and drive to the beeping Beep, 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 beep. Come on, Louis Armstrong, don't be a beeping fist. Beep, 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 beep. Come on, you big beep. beep. You big beep. Come on, big Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Joey Buttafuoco. Hey, Joey. How are you? So, Joey, the last time you were here, you said that, quote, I didn't do the bitch. That's true. I didn't now, do the bitch. Now you're saying you did, and that you pleaded guilty and you're going to jail for it. Well, yeah, but you see, the deal is here. What I was doing, the bitch. What are you doing here? Oh, how are you doing, darling? She'll be out in a moment. I uh, just want to talk here. I was arrested for screwing Amy Fisher. I told you I didn't do it. Right. Well, then why didn't you just plead guilty and say you did do it? I didn't plead guilty. Yes, you did. Uh, no, I didn't. I was uh, playing a game. That sounds right, I was playing the game. Yeah. Mary Jo, come here for a sec, you Mary Jo. Move down, you oh, can't sit here. Ah. You're not gonna bother my wife now either with these questions. Hi, Mary Jo. Hello, darling. So, what do you think about your husband now? He pleaded guilty and now he's saying it was a game. He didn't do it. He yeah, didn't look do at it. her face. What could Amy do to her face? She shot her right here. You had sex with her. Where? Yeah, with her? Of course, she's my wife. No, with the other one. Amy Fisher? Yeah. No, I didn't. I didn't, I swear. Yeah, you did. She's quiet. The wife doesn't know. Oh. Wait a minute. She did know. She got shot. All right. <laughs> so then, Mary Jo, this is okay with you? Your husband pleads guilty. He's going away to prison for a long time. This is okay? He slept with a... I didn't sleep with a... 16... 16-year-old. It's a game. It's a game. You don't get it. You didn't really... It wasn't a game. It's a game? Yeah. But I was fixing a car. Yeah. You were fixing her car? No, and you not her it? car. I was fixing... I popped Amy's hood. Oh, God, did you? That's why you're in so much trouble. I... What is that? What is what? I hear noises in the back. Shut up! What is that? I didn't pop a hood. I popped her hood. I spanked her in the toilet. Ah. I... No. No, we... I, I swear. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Where was I? Where was I when supposedly? You didn't do it. You didn't do it. I didn't do yeah. it. You, you were at an apartment. I was down at a party, yeah. That's right. Yeah. How do you know? Because you were at her house. No, I was at a party, like you said. You were at an apartment. No, yeah. right. you yeah. said a party. I said apartment. I was at a party. Yeah, that's right. Apartment. No, I wasn't. I was at a party. Yeah, that's right. Was Mary Jo with you? Mary Jo was... Yeah. No. Yeah. No, she... She was... She was in the yeah. car. So that's for the car? Yeah. Were you popping her hood too? Well, she had to pop her own hood. It wouldn't work. Ah. Couldn't start it off. So you left her to pop her own I hood. Too bad. Too bad. But no, I didn't. Didn't have an affair with Amy Fisher. Who had her own show? She blamed me. You, you, you said it. You said it. Every local no, news channel. You said you had sex with her. I did. Well then, what do you say you did? She raped him. She raped me. She raped you. Yeah. Oh, and now did you hear this? This went, is a new event now. Now she raped him. I went to the whore. She's such a whore. Oh, she is. <laughs> I went to the hotel to get some sleep because Mary Jo was taking care of the kids. That's right. I needed sleep because I was popping Amy's hood. Wait, you don't have any kids. Uh, yes, we do. Uh, we, yeah, we, we do. do. Yeah, we do. We do. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. How many kids do we have? Um. Two or three? 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 Two or three?
Fucking. What? Little baby. I don't even know. Oh, okay. Oh, by See. the way, Mary Jo's pregnant with the first kid. You're pregnant with the first kid? Yeah. Oh, wait, uh, no, we have no. four. Whose is it? Should I be four? Four. No, it's yours. It's mine? Yeah. Oh. Hey, wait a minute, Ed. Well, you had an affair with him? Well, you were popping Amy Fisher. She was popping hey, her own Hey, when hood. I screwed Amy Fisher, at least I didn't have it. Uh, 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 all right, I confess. I had an affair with Amy Fisher. You didn't all do right? it. You didn't do it. I did do it. I mean, I did it all the way. You we can lose this. Ah. <laughs> there it goes. I swear. <laughs> I didn't have an affair. <laughs> you didn't do it. I swear to God, I, all right, look, I confess, I'm on a floor right now on a broken bench, but I had an affair with Amy Fisher. He didn't I, do it! I wasn't getting anything at home. All she he didn't did, do it! That's what she kept saying, I didn't do it. I he said, I'm it. doing it, I'm I doing it. I, I she kept guy. saying I was impotent, I wasn't impotent. So how long is your jail sentence for? Ten years. Ten years? Then they said maybe parole, I don't know, maybe 20 years. 20 years parole? Yeah. Wow. He didn't do it! I, I, I did, I saw it. I know this guy, he didn't Jesus, do it! Jesus. He did do it! No, no, he didn't! Get a hold of yourself, he did do it! I'm behind her all the way, he didn't do it! She raped him! I'm gonna give you a funny again. That's what she thinks, but I didn't rape her. I had her, I did her. Yeah. In the back seat of my car. Now the truth comes out. You popped her. I did her on the kitchen table. Right now at home, they're watching three little heads. <laughs> <laughs> this is where I did it. Okay. In the back seat of her car, uh -huh. back seat of my car, okay. and Mary Jo's car, right. in the <laughs> Mary Jo's trunk, in our bed, my bed, on Mary Jo's side, she's sitting on your side, by the way, on the kitchen table, in the kitchen sink, on the toilet, in the shower, in a plumbing pipe, on the furnace, uh, at a bunch of hotels, in, uh, in, in, her, in uh, her school, her locker, at her gym, in the gym floor in front of everyone, uh, uh, so many places, on a horse, we did it on a cow, that was interesting, uh, in mud, on a pig, on a camel, on this show, backstage that time, uh, hanging from the ceiling, how many more times did you do it? On a couch, on a chair, you know, as a matter of fact, I did it on a plug once. I, I stand behind him all the way, I stand behind him all the way. Did you hang from a tree? Yes, you didn't I do it. hanging from a tree, yeah, a eating banana. Uh, we had a eating pizza. That was interesting. Uh, I uh, did her uh, okay. on a bus, yeah, on a train, on a subway, and it's very Uh-huh. You did her about 425 times, and yet uh, you keep saying he didn't. I did. I, I stood behind her all the way. I stood behind her all the way. Uh, he didn't do it. Bathroom, You're stupid. Uh, in a closet, <laughs> on a coat hanger. Uh, with why don't you? Why don't you wake up to realism? Don't you understand? He's nothing but a scum. He's a pathetic lowlife. Listen, he's still uh, going. How many times did he do her? No, that goes with what? No, he, he didn't do it. She did it. She raped him 435 times. And, uh, Gee. Uh, you know, she goes and lifts weights, you know? She lifts weights? She lifts weights? What do you mean? Amy Fisher lifts weights? I don't know, but I know what they do on Donahue. You know I'm having deja vu right now. Why? Because this is the game this up before. Did you? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. No, but I did it on, uh, you know one of the interesting places it was? I'm stage. Okay, so Joey Barafuga is going to go to prison. He's taking the desk with him. Uh, that's it for Newsmaker for today. And Mary Jo, you should wake up to realism. Guess what? What? I'm, I'm not Mary Jo. You're not Mary Jo. <gasps> oh my god! Amy Fisher. Oh my Amy god. Fisher. Amy. Oh. Oh, jeez. Uh-oh. Hi, honey. We confess. There, is no, there go, is no Mary Jo. You two are going to have fun now, aren't you? Okay, Come well. Come back to prison. Well, anyway, uh, hey, 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 for news break, I'm going to stay with See you next week. Hopefully. So, coming up next is another sh short show. The guest host. I'm leaving. I'm retiring. So, I hope you all enjoyed today's show. Goodbye.